Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. Hey, you know, the brightest bulb may actually be in the ground. <laughs> Today's show is all about flowering bulbs. In our first segment, we're going to explain the differences between summer flowering and spring flowering bulbs. Once you know which are summer flowering bulbs, you're going to have to dig them up and store them over the winter. We'll tell you how during our second segment. Daffodils and narcissus are a spring flowering bulb in the same family. We'll share with you how to grow them in our third segment. Tulips are possibly the most popular of all bulbs. Listen in to how to have success with tulips in our fourth segment. Last but not least, these bulbs are a real pip. Really? (laughs) If you ever wondered what a pip was, this is it. Somewhat lesser known bulbs like crocus, hyacinths, uh, dis- are going to be discussed. Even uh, grape hyacinths also are a pip in our final segment. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. High Yield Brand Bone Meal contains 10% slow-release natural phosphorus. It helps all plants to develop sturdy root systems and stimulate healthy growth. You'll use it every time you plant bulbs. But it also is an excellent supplement fertilizer for roses, flowers, and vegetable gardens. High Yield Bone Meal is sourced from steamed bone meal, which provides a clean, natural source of phosphorus. High Yield is brought to you by VPG, the Fertilome people. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomers' YouTube channel. Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 1540 a.m. Tune in at 8 a.m. to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 15.40 a.m. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York tri-state area on Classic Oldies, 12.50 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. I must have been thinking of Professor Steve when I was writing this. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> many yardeners. Yardeners. Right? yardeners yeah. Get it? Yeah. Professor Steve, you listening? <laughs> many yardeners. Bulbs are a mystery. There was a time when you could only plant summer flowering bulbs like cannas and caladiums or elephant ears, and you could only plant them as a bulb. But now we get them as plants right. already forced and already started. But you've got to decide, like, this is the time where are you going to try to dig them up and save Save them? them? I would. What's the, you know, if you've got a little bit of room in a Mm -hmm. cool, dry area, you know, even like a basement, uh, something like that, uh, someplace where it's, you don't want uh, a lot of light. Um, But everybody has finished basements these days. (laughs) (laughs) Crawl space. You know, okay. (laughs) <laughs> well, I've been in my crawl space and okay. it's scary. Oh. <laughs> but in, in any case, but you want to store bulbs and try to get them to overwinter because they're going to be. Let, let me back up a little bit. Inside baseball here on bulbs, bulbs are sold by size. Okay, like they each have a size de- designation. Um, we always tell you go to your local garden center because you'll get top size bulbs. What that means is you'll get the biggest bulbs possible. And it's almost like even when you buy f- fruit, like back when, you know, I was with the family farm market, when we would buy fruit, we'd buy them so many sizes. Anybody buy shrimp? They, You know, you buy shrimp and you want it, the, the lower the number, you know, 15 to 18 shrimp, the bigger the shrimp. Sure. Now, the same thing with bulbs. Bulbs have a size almost that same way. And that if you're overwintering the bulbs that you're taking out of the ground, they're going to be that much bigger come 
springtime and summer when they're growing. So if you have success, this is, this is why you want to do it. But again, it's spring flowering and summer flowering bulbs. So you need to have summer flowering bulbs dug up and you need to get them and you take those corms. Um, again, it's caladiums, it's cow lilies, it's dahlias, it's elephant ears, gladiolas, uh, tuberous begonias even. Okay, that those those are, I mean, always we seem to have more and more of those sold just simply by plants, but those plants are going to form a bulb. Uh, let's see. There's all, you know what I asked? I just thought of this. Is it sweet potato vine? Oh, yeah. It's another one. Sweet potatoes. Yeah, I mean, I, right. when you dig up your sweet potato vine, it, don't be surprised if there's potatoes, potatoes on the bottom of them. So I don't know about eating them, but yeah. you could probably <laughs> save them. And plant them again yeah, next in the next spring. Yeah. So what you've got to do is, is you've got to get those taken taken out of the ground now. That you've got to clean them up. Uh, we, last week we were talking about uh, uh, onions and garlic. Mm-hmm. You've got to clean the bulbs up, and you got to put them in a dry area, in that where you're not going to go and it's it's important to to make sure that you're saving them and determine it now. If if it's after a frost, that's fine. But start looking now and saying, all right, I'm going to try to save them. I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to try to do that. Uh, maybe those I'll just replace next year. Get an idea on that. And then when we come back, we're going to tell you all about how to store them and whether you want to just let them in the ground and rot. Like, for instance, there's hardy bananas. Hardy banana. oh, there's yeah. hardy bananas, and then there are um, there, there's the tropical bananas. Like, you, you can decide, too. Do I want to they try want to, to, try to yeah. get them to come back? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I it, with bananas, it's, uh, I don't know, they get pretty ugly. They do, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> anyway, yeah. when we come back in our next segment, we're going to tell you all about how to protect those tender bulbs and how to care for them over the winter. We'll be right back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Last year, millions of Americans asked the Internet about protecting their lawns and gardens. There's one simple answer. BioAdvanced. Because gardeners have trusted the Blue Bottle for decades. Invasive insects? Blue Bottle. Lawn fungus? Blue Bottle. Japanese beetles? Blue Bottle. A BioAdvanced answer for every question and guaranteed solutions for every problem. BioAdvanced. Get more from the Blue Bottle. BioAdvanced All-in-One Rose and Flower Care controls insects and diseases, plus feeds. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Now that fall is here, it's time to store those summer flowering bulbs and roots or let them rot in the ground. <laughs> ah, <laughs> yeah. They're plants. Not puppies. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know, many of the tender bulbs like cannas, dahlias, elephant ears, gladiolas, tuberous begonias, and other summer favorites will not survive the cold winter, okay, Uh, that they will grow and there's an underground structure that they'll have and it'll be either a corm, a tuber, a rhizome, a bulb, or a root. Mm -hmm. And 
if you let them in the ground, they're, they're not going to come back, but you need to pop them out of the ground and store them, and you need to, to take care of them by just putting them in an area that's not going to get to freezing temperatures. Like gladiolas, for instance. Gladiolas are an underused plant. They, are, they? Um, they, they really are. Mm-hmm. That Beautiful flowers, great cup flowers. Mm-hmm. And with gladiolas, you basically want to let them dry. They're, they'll tell you that they're probably yellow by now. Mm-hmm. And you're going to pop them out of the ground, and you're going to let them dry out in a, in a, in a warm area, like 70, 60, 70 degrees. So basically house temperatures. Yeah. You know, if you want to put them, if you have a, a, you know, one of the great areas, or like if you have a heated porch or like where it's a, um, it, it's got windows, but it's not something where it has a sliding door where it's kept cool, yeah, it's nice. but doesn't, you know, doesn't get down to 20 degrees. Yeah. That is honestly one of the best areas. But you want to let the gladiolas dry off a little bit, and then you're going to want to um, kind of keep them in full sun drying so that they cure. Uh, like we talked about onions, you want them to, to form a bit of a, a hardened shell over the bulb. You don't want them to be soft like you just pop them out of the ground. And you're going to keep the, the foliage on and then – what you do is once they're dried out for about three weeks, you're going to snap that uh, that stem off so that you just have, that's a corm. It's not necessarily a bulb, but hey, if you call it a bulb, that's fine. I'll know what you mean. <laughs> um, and that you're going to just throw away the, the, uh, the tops. And then there's what would be called the mother corm, okay? And that sometimes there's baby corms that form. So they're like little bitty, bitty bulbs, bulbs. All right. So think of it that way. And if they're the size of a quarter or larger, you can save those and plant them in the ground next year and they'll, they'll actually flower. Anything smaller than that will not. Um, a lot of times you may have to wait for those smaller bulbs for a, for a couple of years to get actually to a good flowering size, but it's something where, yeah, you don't have to buy any more gladiola bulbs because yeah, you've yeah. got those baby corms that are growing into full size. Keep them in a cool, dry spot, about 40 to 50, 45 degrees. And you're going to put them in like, you know, the when you buy onions and you get them in that net bag, yeah. you're going to dry them in something like that and just keep them, keep them in that and then you'll be good. Yeah. Caladiums, they like it a little bit you're a lot of the same thing. You're going to remove all the foliage after you pop them out. You're going to dry them in the same type of thing, same location for about a week. And you're going to store them in, you probably have seen this if you've bought them. They're, they're in these plastic bags with holes in it, but it has peat moss in it. And that peat moss will store them and that will keep them safe from, from totally drying out. Because uh, the biggest problem is that they rot. It's going to be the same thing. With elephant ear bulbs, they're gigantic. You know, they, I mean, they're, they're they look huge. like coconuts. <laughs> you know, and and I mean the inside of a coconut, not yeah. the outside. Yeah. Okay, you know what I mean. And they like again, they're going to be in a little bit warmer temperatures. The the tops will die back, and that you're going to leave them in the sun, just like the others. And then you'll put them in with a little bit of dry peat moss. And you've got to check these over the season. Again, it dark, dry, place, cool, like 50 degrees is usually best. And like Julio was saying, it's like, you know, maybe the front part of your um, crawl space or someplace like that. And, and develop an area where you're going to do that because uh, you need to check them, too, over the winter Make sure because, you know, one bad apple spoils the oh. whole, you know, you know what I mean? You've heard that yeah, saying. Yeah. And that's what will happen is like if one bulb begins to rot and you've got a bag full of bulbs, that next bulb's going to rot that's touching it and so on and so forth. And you may end up with the entire bag rotted. But if you check it a few times over the winter, you can pull that rotting bulb out and the other ones will will be okay, but because they, it does need to be dehydrated somewhat, it, it I'm not worried about them drying out. I'm worried about them rotting. Oh, yeah. That that's that's the worst thing. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you what, they stink. 
Yeah. They stink, man. When you have a, when you have a rotting bowl, uh, <laughs> you're going to know it. So, yeah. you know, if you don't want to necessarily dig in, just smell it. Yeah. Uh, you'll also probably see um, gnats that'll be flying around, around too. Yeah. So, again, you want to keep them in that cooler temperature um, for the, the rest of the winter. And there are some folks that uh, – did Professor Steve say that he saves his geraniums? I know he dug up his geraniums oh, yeah, from does. Florida. Florida, yeah. Like yeah. He, he's, he's a snowbird, so he'll oh, take yeah. his, his, his <laughs> geraniums. He did it this yeah. spring. He took yeah. he dug out the geraniums yeah. and brought them and put them in his house yeah. here in New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. so you, it used to be that you would dry out. You'd hang them upside down, yeah. and you would dry them out and that you would replant them yeah. and the roots in the spring. Mm-hmm. So, you want to give that a try, and right I, I, I encourage it because yeah. it, this is the fun part of gardening, where it's something that is like I don't know the, I don't the advanced class. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's the advanced class yeah, of, of, of gardening where yeah. you're trying to do some things that it's a lot of it is old school to be honest, yeah. mm-hmm. um, because again all of this stuff the only way that you could buy it was to buy the bulb or the root. And that would be the only way that you could get it. Now, fortunately, we we live in a, you know, got to have it now society. So we throw away. Yeah. By the way, yeah. all of you want it now society, tulips get planted now. now. Okay. Right. Don't ask us for the tulips when you see them blooming in the spring. <laughs> uh, but again, yeah. you know, we'll be glad to sell you, you know, uh, three tulip bowls for $8 when they could have been 50 cents in the spring. But uh Again, it's you plant them it. now. Mm-hmm. Just plant them now. I just need to add that. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and again, it it's check the packing material. Make sure that it's not getting wet somehow. Uh, a lot of times, if you put them in a basement, you've got a you know moist basement. Moist, it can yeah, be a problem. Yeah, it can be a problem. You know, problem. if if they are, you you just replace that with dry material. Mm-hmm. If they seem like they're shriveling, like like where we talk about in the house plants yeah. in the winter time, the heat. It just sucks the moisture out of it. You can you can mist them a little bit, yeah. but my guess is you're probably not going to have that yeah. problem. But just like Goldilocks, they need it to be just right. Mm-hmm. But I tell you, it's a it's a it's a fun thing to try. Mm-hmm. You know, what's the worst that can happen? You go and you yeah. plant them next year. Yeah, again. So again, but you might have. I mean, you might have good success, yeah. and in, and that it's been done for hundreds and hundreds of years. So. This is not something that is new science. This is actually old, old school science. Yeah. So, nice? again, some of your summer flowering bulbs, like, again, mm-hmm. there's no reason why you shouldn't uh, take in your, your elephant ear bulbs. There's no reason. Away. Right? All, all of your dahlias, if, if you've got, yeah. like, dinner plate dahlias, yeah, big dinner plate dahlias, yeah. bring those in. Mm-hmm. So, again, it, give it a shot. Yeah. Give it a oh, shot. Yeah. If you've got questions about it, yeah. you know the hotline. That number is 609-685-1880. Please call us and, and leave us your message and your question, and we will call you back personally and that we will go over with you what your what your needs are and we'll have those answers. And if we use it on air, hmm. we will get you a free T-shirt. T-shirt. All right, we're going to be back in the garden talking about daffodils Ooh. right after these messages. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. We are proud to announce that Bloomers in the Garden has partnered with Renewal by Anderson of Greater Philadelphia, Delaware, South Jersey, and Southern Maryland. Renewal by Anderson is the top window and door company in the United States, specializing in replacement windows and doors. You might be thinking right now, what the heck do windows have to do with gardening? Well, Renewal by Anderson makes this beautiful garden bay window that's energy efficient and made from recycled materials. It's perfect for growing the finest indoor plants possible. When you are looking out your windows filled with 
plants in your beautiful garden, you don't want to see old windows that are cloudy, warped, or even rotting. That's why people in the horticulture community love Renewal by Anderson. Not only do we want our gardens to be beautiful, but their homes as well. Renewal by Anderson participates in horticultural events such as flower shows, earth days, and eco fairs. To get more information and set up a free home consultation, please visit www.philadelphiawindow.com and be sure to tell them Bloomers in the Garden sent you. Is she gone? Nope, she's still standing there. What is she doing? I think she's watching the grass grow. (gasps) That's our job. I know, right? She's watching the grass grow, the flowers grow. Ooh, look, the trees are growing. I can't say as I blame her. Remember where she bought all this stuff? Duh, bought us there too. Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Find us online at bloomers.com. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. I love daffodils. Oh, so do I. I love them. Daffodils are like they're just happy flowers, and yeah. and it announces like they're early, yeah. so it announces, "Hey, it's springtime! Look yeah. at this! I'm growing!" <laughs> you know, yeah. so I I just their colors. Um, it used to be, you know, a lot of times most of the daffodils we see are yellow, yeah. but there are the white daffodils that have an orange throat yeah. to them, and it, and it's yeah. just it's just happy plants yeah. now. Daffodils are, are actually the same plant. Uh, it's Narcissus. So Narcissus, probably the most famous Narcissus would be, um, I guess, paper whites. Paper whites. I, they, I, here, you can use the word fragrant, but I think they stink. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, <laughs> you they smell like, like old ladies' perfume. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. you, don't, you don't know? You, you, oh, yeah. Yeah. No? No. 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 You don't know what a Narcissus smells like? Mm-mm. Well, it smells like our old lady's perfume. <laughs> anyway, because they're very fragrant, almost too fragrant. But daffodils, tulips, any of the bulbs that you're planting now, okay, don't wait to plant them. And we're saying that because they need something that, right, right it's going to, I'm going to sound Uh-oh. smart. Uh-oh. Okay. I'm throwing a horticultural term. They need vernalization. <laughs> Vern who? Vernalization. <laughs> Vernal. yeah. Vernalization. Yeah. I'm on my car for a minute. <laughs> now, vernalization yeah. is that they need, and many of the plants and shrubs, and, you know, you wonder why. It's like, okay, like how come they don't bloom year-round? That they need to have that cold period between, you know, the winter time, and so that that forces them into bloom in the spring. Without that, they wouldn't, or they'd be all leaves, or they'd be something else. But again, uh, people that hold on to their tulips, for instance, like, oh, I planted them in the spring. It's like, oh. yeah, you're going to get all leaves more than likely. You can get flowers. Um, that's if they haven't rotted. We talked about that last segment. <laughs> but that's why you can't buy those bulbs in the spring. So you need to plant your daffodils and tulips in the springtime. And and any of the bulbs, like uh, really hyacinths are another one. All of the crocus, crocus they crocus. all need that vernalization so that they will bloom after the winter. They need that freezing. It sounds crazy, but it's the truth. It's the truth. Um, they will... I, one thing I like about daffodils and narcissus, the deer don't like them. You know, so the deer aren't going to come and eat them. Uh, Long lasting. My goodness. They are. Oof. They are. From the time that they start to show color to the time that they're done, it could be as long as two months, depending on what our weather is. Mm-hmm. Um, it is multi varieties. Like I said, there's white with pink and there's white with yellow and there's there's named varieties. Like there's a Disney variety. That, Disney variety. Yeah. That, wow. that, that's, uh, what, it's just what color is that one? Uh, that's one of the ones that are white and pink. Oh, yeah. But the throat, like the trumpet of the of the flower is a little bit smaller. So right. like you go with King Alfred uh, daffodil, that's the big, big typical, you know, yellow daffodil trumpet. that you think about. Yeah. So if, if you're looking for them, look for King Alfred. That's a great daffodil. Um, they like well-drained soil mm-hmm. uh, in – and again, these bulbs, where do they go? They go dormant uh, for the summer, so it's not like they're going to be, you know, there year round. So you can get away with something like planting underneath trees, 
is something you could do because the trees will have no leaves. And we're talking about deciduous trees, not evergreens. The The trees will not have any leaves. And then that will allow the sun to come through to warm the soil. And then the tulips or daffodils and such will come, come up and that they'll do great. And one thing about daffodils as opposed to tulips, tulips you only get really two good years out of it. And it's because what happens is that they send up smaller bulbs and they split and divide Mm -hmm. and that they end up being leaves, more like leaves in that second year because the bulbs do need to be separated and then replanted and grown on like that's how you get more tulip bulbs is that they they take the smaller bulbs and where that split and that they become next you grow those on but again tulips uh, i'm sorry uh daffodils you need to plant them in good soil where you don't want it to be a wet area that's gonna they will they will rot if you put them in a wet area that uh, aaron you got you're right Aaron's not all right. Um, Aaron's got a technical issue, but we're we're good. We're good. Um, how do you treat them when they go out of bloom? And I get that a lot. Can I rip them up? Can I cut them back? No. You you have to let your daffodil bulbs flower, leaves come out, flower. Then they go, and the the flowers fall off. Then the leaves, it has to go yellow, and they have to have a natural dormant cycle so that when they start to die down uh, and that they turn yellow, they need to stay on the plant. And it's going to look ugly for a while. Uh, A lot of people will, like, try to hide it where they'll take rubber bands and they'll bend down the foliage and they'll put a rubber band around it because that foliage is going to eventually die back down to the ground. So... Again, it, it's one of those things where it just is something you have to do. Mm-hmm. Let, Let them go. go yellow. Let them go yellow. Mm-hmm. When you plant them, you want to you know soften that that soil up. If if you have like a hard soil or anything like, it's your one opportunity. You get to add some bumper crop in there, so you get to not only add some organic matter, but you also have some. Uh, you, you're you're basically improving the soil. Mm-hmm especially if you have any clay or sand, you get to improve that that element um, in the soil. So you have organic matter, clay and sand, that's what makes up loam, and that you really want to add organic matter because that will break down and make it soft and it'll also make it easier to plant other things. Um, add bulb tone from a spoma, mm-hmm. or you could use a spoma bulb tone or holly tone. Uh, you can also use high yield bone meal. And again, that will add to the roots and it's something that builds up the root system. It's perfect for bulbs. It's got to be a hundred years old. (laughs) And it works so well, they haven't improved on it. So, I mean, it (laughs) just, no, I mean, it's like the perfect bulb food. So again, it's a spoma bulb tone, or you want to use bone meal, uh, again, it bone meal will stay into the soil longer. It also adds a, a little bit of calcium in that soil. Um, again, plant your bulbs. Do it now. Um, I like doing it after the first hard frost, mm-hmm. at least. You know, yeah, so when okay. so say when your annuals die back, That's plant time. your bulbs. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, can't wait too long. You can't wait till the ground is hard. hard Forget yeah. it; it's too late because you want to get some growth on the root system of, of the bulbs yeah. before we go into full-time winter. Yeah. Um, and that's why you can't plant them in the spring. Mm-hmm. But again, daffodils, go to your local garden center, yeah. take a look at all of the different types and the different varieties, mm-hmm. and you'll yeah. be amazed. Yeah. It'll be amazed. And, and again, let them go yellow, let them go dormant, and then once the foliage is all yellow, you can cut it down. And then you can plant in front of, and again, I would always leave a gap. Don't make them a border. Yeah, like plant straight, them in straight f- line. No, no, no. You can put them in a straight line. Uh, I, 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 honestly, a, a little clump is is better. Clump is probably a crappy word. <laughs> 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 what I mean is to just plant them as like a a section. But my point is this: 
is don't put them right up in front of the bed because what you can do is you'll put them in the back of the bed or or on the crown of the bed, and then in front of them, while they're going yellow, you can plant your annuals, and that will hide them. Hide those, yeah. And that will hide the the bulbs. It won't be as as hard to deal with. Um, Also, once they go die back to the ground, remember you don't want to cut into them with a shovel, but you can plant annuals over top of them. That's nice. You know, and so that's something you could do. You could do that also with uh, tulips. We'll get into that in our next segment. Feed them, though. Make sure you feed them, plant them. And remember, they will come back. And and once you put them there, pretty much you're going to have them for a long long time. time. So make sure you pick your right color. And uh, honestly, tradition, traditionally, the regular daffodils look best. And they also make a great cut flower to bring in. So remember that. And if you give them as a gift... You better plant them. Plant it for them. Anytime you give a gift of a plant, unless it's a house plant, you make sure that you plant it for them because you don't want to be that guy that burdens somebody with another task to do because nobody needs that, (laughs) especially me. (laughs) (laughs) All right, we'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Bartolome's Triple Action contains 70% neem oil and 0.25% pyrethrins as a concentrate and ready to spray. It is an insecticide, fungicide, and miticide label to use on vegetables, fruits, nuts, herbs, spices, and ornamentals. This organic OMRI-listed product controls a wide variety of insect pests and diseases, including aphids, scale, spider mites, white flies, rust, leaf spot, and powdery mildew. This insecticide is an all-in-one bottle that will cure just about any problem you may run into throughout the year. Fertilome's Triple Action has been helping gardeners across the country for years. Best to apply in late evening and early morning hours. Mix one ounce, which is equivalent to two tablespoons in a gallon of water. The best part is Triple Action may be used up to the day of harvest. So the next time you are visiting your favorite garden center, Ask for Fertilum's triple action and expect to have the best-looking plants in the neighborhood. Fall is for planting. Visit Bloomer's Nursery and let one of Bloomer's nurserymen help you lay out your next landscape project. Bloomer's has the finest selection of fall flowers. Hardy mums in multiple sizes, celosia, coxcomb, winter pansies, ornamental peppers, ornamental kale and cabbage, and all types of grasses. Bloomers has a frightening large selection of face pumpkins, flat stacking pumpkins, gourds, and fall decorating items. Come visit Bloomers, the store behind the radio program, open seven days. Go to www.bloomers.com. That's www.bloomers.com. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Tulips are the most popular bulb in the country. Easy to grow, but needs to be planted before it gets too cold out there. Yep. Right? What's that word? Fernalization. 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 And that uh, the winter cold is what spurs them into emergence in flowers in the spring. So many times we get people that come in and they see their neighbor having tulips blooming. They say, do you have any tulips? And it's like, well, you know, <laughs> three months ago. But uh, you've got to plant them now. You, you don't have a choice. So, again, go to your local garden center. Get those bulbs. Don't uh, And don't cheapen out. It's like I saw them at Sam's Club, and it was a oh. whole pack for $2. Yeah, it's like they're dried out, and they're undersized, and that you 
Bulbs are bought differently. You know, you buy top size bulbs. The bigger the bulb, the better the flower. So again, I I think that when you buy box store bulbs, it spoils. We lose more gardeners because of that. Because of that. Because all of a sudden that I have no success with bulbs. Mm -hmm. So tulips. I'm a Dutchman. I I, I, tulips are, yeah. Yeah. Tulips. Tulips. uh, Yeah, we we plant. How many? Every other year, we plant about 7,000 bulbs around bloomers. Pretty um, impressive. Like we're, this year will be year two, mm-hmm. so we'll have to take them out of the ground and replant um, this So this fall of 2025. Yeah. So we've got second. Uh, second you shot. get basically two years because they divide, okay? Um, and it's important that, that you need to let them turn yellow. We're going to get into that in a second. Um, again, they need that cold temperature. And it's about 12 to 14 weeks of temperature below 55 degrees um, in order to bloom. Pick a full sun location, and you can go under deciduous trees because, again, they're not going to have any leaves when their blooms and their blossoms are set. So so when that bud is set on top of that uh, the tulip where you, everybody knows what that looks like, where it looks like a little, you know, looks like a little bulb on top, really. I mean, what do you call that? And you oh. see that. On so, the so will they, when, on the top of the, uh, yeah, when you see the tulip flower, uh-huh. you know, and it's that, you see it, it's like a big, you know, almost oh, like yeah. oval, it's, it's like a, you know, it's the flower, it's the flower it's bud. Flower it's bud, got yeah. to have some name. So, yeah. hey, call the hotline. If you know what that's <laughs> called, besides a bud, you know, <laughs> you know that. But uh, call the hotline, let us know. It's 609 685 1880. You want to make sure that they're not going to be water. Like you can't put them in an area where it's wet. Uh, they will rot in the ground, and then all of a sudden, it's going to be it's going to be a mess. When you plant them, just like with your daffodils, you want to put in bulb tone from a spoma, or you want to use bone meal. Uh, tulips prefer a, a rich, well draining soil, it's slightly acidic, but you don't have to worry about trying to mess with the. Um, West with their pH. I mean, it most of the time between six and seven is what our soils are naturally. Anyway, um, use bumper crop when you're planting them. Uh, we do, and we use uh, bumper crop in some of our bigger areas. We're using uh, mushroom soil, and that just improves our existing soil just a little bit, makes it softer and easier to grow in. Uh, let's see, tulips. Here's some fun facts. Okay, uh, tulips. Are the flowers, Julio, you got to remember this. Mm-hmm. Tulips are the flowers linked to the 11th wedding anniversary. Oh, really? So wow. the 11th wedding anniversary. Really came up with that. You get, hey, you know, it's like the diamond is 50th oh, anniversary, okay. I think. Right. Yeah. Aaron, what, what anniversary are you at? This will be 16. 16. Mm-hmm. All right. Better to see. It might be, yeah. might be daffodils. <laughs> <You never know. laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, you know how we had the the market crash, oh, yeah. you know, and the Seven. yeah, that was scary. Um, believe it or not, the Dutch tulip bulb market bubble <laughs> was the most fat, famous, and studied asset bubble crashes of all time. And he, here's the thing: is that where? At the height of this thing, okay, the height of the bubble, that it was tulips were so valued, let's just say, overvalued really, they were selling for 10,000 guilders, which uh, that's uh, the, the dollars in, in, in Holland. And it was equal to the value of a mansion on the Amsterdam Grand Canal. It, it And it would just, and what happened is that I think just, Went out, it's like, oh, I'm not paying. You know, once it hit that top of the bubble, the bubble popped, mm-hmm. and it and, and it really caused a, a major catastrophe in uh, in Holland. Tulips were first introduced to Holland in 1593, and that that bubble, you know, you think it's like, oh, that must have been recent. No, that bubble was in in the uh, 1600s, so it was 1634, 1637, wow. and Normally, toxic tulips can be eaten, but it's not common. But here's the deal. In, in, in World War II, a little bit of history, during the Second World War, 
that it had gotten so bad, and again, the, the Nazis were had taken over, um, and that it had just reached a, it, it, a famine had basically taken over in the, a December freeze. It lasted several months, which was was extreme weather for the the, the time, you know, um, and. What they had was only thing is it was tulips and that they were eating the tulips to survive because that all of their other crops that they normally would have were not available. So they began to sell them as food um, that doctors actually you have to, you know, you <laughs> it's like that old saying it's like. They, you, they taste okay as long as you peel them right, you know? and that's <laughs> what. That that's the thing is the doctor said it's like all right, well, well, this is what you have to do so they're not poisonous. And then they gave recipes like you know you remove the brown skin, you cut off the any of the the roots, and you got to cut the bulb in half from top to bottom. Remove the flower stain, wash it, um, and then to clear any of the soil, and you cook it for thirty minutes. And it it's like kind of like to, uh, potatoes, yeah. Um, but again, it it even has like a little bit of an oniony taste. Don't eat your tulips, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Don't go out and buy tulips to. Food. But every Dutch person knows <laughs> yeah. on how bad that that it was. You know, everybody knows the depression of the United States in and that the same thing basically in the Netherlands because. A lot of people were starving. Mm -hmm. But tulips are just the most beautiful flower. I I find tulips, you know, we talked about daffodils and how daffodils welcome the spring. Mm -hmm. And they do. Daffodils welcome the spring, but they're kind of like almost like monoculture, monocolored, Mm -hmm. where it adds like a block of color. Tulips themselves have variegations of red and, and on the same flower, like red and yellow or parrot tulips look like peonies flowers almost. Yeah, okay. And they're all different kinds. And they also bloom at different times. You could have tulips that will bloom in the early varieties in March, but you also have late varieties that are blooming in May. And the May varieties are actually more spectacular than the earlier varieties. And like, for instance, parrot tulips, yeah. like I mentioned, that look like peonies, they will flower late. But they need that vernalization. Don't if you're looking at tulips in the spring and you're having that, you know, I want to, you know, having a case of the Joneses, you know, I want to keep up with the Joneses and put tulips in, and it's and it's in March or April. It's too late. They need the vernalization, which is the freezing over the winter, in order for them to bloom like they are and like they are at your neighbors. So again, don't think that you can get away. If you go and you buy a tulip that's, what, 50 cents a piece, a bulb or something like that, or you have to buy like a six-inch pot that has maybe three bulbs in it, maybe five, and that's going to be like eight bucks. Mm -hmm. So again, it's plant your bulbs in the fall, okay? Don't plant them or think about planting them any other time. It's really, it's, and, and again, it, it's plant them in mass. Don't try to mix colors. I find that mixed colors are just not as dramatic as when you go and you plant like all red or all purple or all mix. Um, you can plant different areas of your yard, but make sure that it's a, a big area that you're planting like 50 of the same color or something along those lines as opposed to planting like yellow and just like mixing them all up. Not yeah. pretty. Yeah, not pretty. Not pretty. Or just a few, you know, two or three. Nah. Yeah, no, no. And it's got to be, It's you're, you're planting them in a mass yes. planting, yeah. not just a few by your doorstep. Yeah. Uh, it, it, does, it is not impressive when yeah. you're doing that. And that's a good rule of thumb for most fall planting bulbs, you know, for the spring flowering bulbs. You want them to, to be a big show, big show yeah. not just, uh, you know, a few yeah. plants. Yeah. Bring in the show. Yep. Big time. Yep. You know, in our next segment, we're going to talk about pips and different varieties. Those you could probably do in a smaller, uh, a smaller amount. But again, tulips or daffodils, you want to do a pretty big mass planting, and it just looks so impressive. And 
and that again, it it's you know it'll make you happy yeah. coming home from work. Yeah, you, well. <laughs> <laughs> you come home from work and you uh, see them, that. and yeah. they it's just like you know it's just um, it makes you happy. Yeah, it makes you happy. It does. All right. If you've got questions about bulbs, please call the hotline at 609-685-1880. We want to hear from you, ask your question, and then we'll call you back in person with the answer. And that if we use your call on the show, you will get a free Bloomers t-shirt. We'll be back in the garden right after this. Last year, millions of Americans asked the internet about protecting their lawns and gardens. There's one simple answer, BioAdvanced, because gardeners have trusted the Blue Bottle for decades. Invasive insects, Blue Bottle. Lawn fungus, Blue Bottle. Japanese beetles, Blue Bottle. A BioAdvanced answer for every question and guaranteed solutions for every problem. BioAdvanced, get more from the Blue Bottle. BioAdvanced all-in-one rose and flower care controls insects and diseases, plus feeds. Here's the dirt on potting mixes. They're not all created equal. A Spoma organic potting mix gives roots the ideal balance of air and moisture. It contains a special blend of beneficial mycorrhiza to help grow stronger roots, bigger plants, and more bountiful blooms. Try a Spoma organic potting mix indoors and out for all your potted flowers, vegetables, and you'll see why it's the best. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you. Organic potting mix from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Hey, welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. All right. Hey, there are spring flowering bulbs that need an honorable mention. Again, we're talking about spring flowering bulbs. Why are we talking about that? Because you have to plant them now for them to flower in the spring. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there are some of these bulbs that you recognize, and they just aren't Easter flowers. And first one is hyacinths. Mm-hmm. Great fragrance, good color, you know, basically whites, purples, and they sometimes call them blue, uh, pinks. But it's got such a, a great fragrance that it's one of those things that I would suggest for you to grow, like, by the front door so that when people come up to the front door – or Look, what do I talk about? I talk about my trash cans all the time. Oh, yeah, I have these yes. by my trash cans. I have these by my trash cans. You know, it's not that I spend my time at my trash cans, but my trash cans are right near my garage. So when I pull up each night and I, and I get out of my car, I plant plants like hyacinths because I can smell the hyacinths when I get out of my car or I go into my car or I put up my trash or, you know, I do... I'm I'm over there a lot. Like I never go in my front door. Yes. I mean, I, yeah. you do, right? Do you go in yeah, front I do. door? Yeah, that's because your way your house is set up. Yeah, that uh, where I, you know, I, anybody going to my front door is the Amazon guy. You know, <laughs> that's the, the only guy, guy goes to my front door, <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't have to smell the hyacinths. Yeah. <laughs> so, There's no time to. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so again. The hyacinths um, are, are a great plant. They're low. They're not, they're not going to get much higher than about a foot or so. Um, they look great. They're going to have to go through that that vernalization. Now, by now, you know, you should all know that. Everybody repeat, repeat after me. Vernalization. Okay, that that is when you need a cold period in order for a plant to bloom. Okay, so... Fool your friends. Tell your friends how smart you are because they need fertilization. Um, you need to wait uh, until the temperatures are below 60 degrees before you plant them. So we're talking about, you know, right about now, mm-hmm. um, November. And they prefer full sun. But again, those deciduous trees, if they have no leaves on them, it's going to pull them into bloom. And you're going to put them about six inches apart. And about, you know, a, a good rule of thumb, how deep do I plant my bulbs? And you just use this as formula, twice the depth of the bulb. So if it's a tulip bulb, it's like maybe a couple inches. So you're going to plant it a couple inches on top. So it's four inches down. Same thing with daffodils, same with all your bulbs. So twice the depth of the bulb. Uh, hyacinths, again, a great color, but the it's all about the fragrance. It's all about the fragrance and that they do fantastic. You can even plant them because, again, they're plants, not, not puppies. You can plant them, and you can throw them out at the, in the spring season. Like, say you put them in your planters. Like, 
your spring planters or your summer planters, fall planters, all of those plants have gotten uh, hit by the frost. Uh, and what I would do is I would put uh, tulips, hyacinths, even crocus, and put put them in the ground, then plant pansies on top of them. And you'll have a great show in spring. So in March, all of a sudden, these things will all be coming alive Early and looking March. great while everybody's twiddling their thumbs, wondering, it's like, one of the sun patients coming out? Yeah. It's like, well, <laughs> you can't plant them <laughs> until the middle May. of May. Uh, but these you can plant, and they'll be in flower in March. So you're going to be staggering them. Another honorable mention, and these are the pips, crocus. 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 I always wondered, what was it, the pips? It was somebody, somebody in the pips. Come on, Holly, this is your time uh, period. Not Gladys Knight. It is Gladys. It is. It is. Gladys Knight and the pips? Yeah. There you go. She's so, left uh, on the midnight train in Georgia. Uh, there you go. Don't, don't start the thing. I'm thinking Georgia by, yeah, never mind. <laughs> anyway, mm-hmm. uh, crocus are one of the earliest flowering bulbs. Uh, they, they can actually begin blooming in late winter. Uh, full sun, light shade, plant in November, three inches to four inches apart. Uh, and again, you can, if they become, like they'll come back automatically. You don't have to worry about them necessarily becoming a problem uh, with, you know, not flowering the next year or the year after that or year after that. These continually flower. But the one thing is, is if they get to be overclouded, you can divide the clumps and replant them, okay, and that that will, you know, they'll end up coming up in other areas, so you're actually, you know, getting bonuses. Irises are, are another one that they're going to flower a little bit later, um, and there are different varieties and colors of, of irises. I, I actually would rather plant an iris plant than plant an iris its root, you know? You would? Yeah. Yeah, and it's just because I, I know the plant and I can get uh, probably a wider variety of, of the flowers because yeah. there's different types. Like there's your bearded iris yeah. and and different types of iris. So yeah. I, I would probably buy the plant, plant. instead. Yeah. yeah. Uh, ornamental onions, mm-hmm. like those are those giant plants. Yeah. You know, you always see the picture on the box. It's just yeah. like, like blonde-haired kid yeah, with a you little, know, reaching up to yeah, grab this gigantic, up. you know, yeah. Basketball size <laughs> yeah. purple flower. Uh-huh. Um, that's what you would plant now. And again, they can be a, as much as eight inches across. Mm-hmm. So they're big. They're big balls. They're yeah. big. Yeah. And most of the time, they're in that, that purpley blue color. Oh, yeah, and they can be four foot tall. Oh, yeah. They're foot tall. Mm-hmm. Now, on the other extreme, snowdrops. Snowdrops. Huh? Snow yeah. Like, I love snowdrops. Yeah. And, and you know why? They're, 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 they're cute, like almost like magical flowers that flowered yeah, like the first thing to flower in the spring mm-hmm. and there's different varieties um again it, and now here do i really want to get into botanical names mm-hmm. not really mm-hmm. but uh again the botanical name is gala is from greek for milk okay anthos is greek for flower so there you go, there you go. yeah a little greek galanthus yeah. okay galanthus navalis is the botanical name mm-hmm. so again it comes from from the Greek mm-hmm. for milk and flour. And also the Latin would be snow, 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 is snow covered. covered. So yeah. it covers, it's great pure white flowers. Um, again, we are done pretty much with having snow on the ground where if we do get any snow, it melts very quick. And then here these flowers are left that have some green leaves mm-hmm. and a beautiful white hanging flower um, that the leaves don't come up later. They're actually, they, the flower comes up first, first yeah. and that is just basically a stalk with, with a, a perfectly pure white flower. And that is just, uh, it kind of nods down to the ground. It, it's, it's a beautiful plant. And then the, the leaves, when they do come out, they're like a gray green. It's a great plant because it comes out so soon, um, in the, in the, uh, the the spring is actually winter when it actually does bloom, and then we have grape hyacinths. Oh yeah, grape hyacinths. I have, and all of the bulbs that we're talking about right here, as opposed to doing mass plantings like you do of tulips and daffodils, these can be planted in little pockets that you know maybe a foot round or a foot. You know, you don't have to do them in, in big, massive, massive swaths throughout your yard. Um, 
I have grape hyacinths that are planted. Uh, again, it, it's next to my driveway because it reminds me of spring. It's yeah. like, why am I going to work? And it's like, oh, yeah, that's why. You know? <laughs> uh, grape hyacinths, they, you know, fragrant and that they're little tiny clusters of grape, uh, like purple, purple grapes, like miniature. Yeah, they're cute. They, they are. That's a good way of putting them. And that they become naturalized, yeah. like they'll do their they'll thing. Grow. You don't. I don't even pay attention to mine. Yeah. It's like I. You don't need oh, to. that's right. Yeah, there they are. <laughs> you know? Come back every year. Yep, <laughs> reliably yeah. about six inches tall. Um, and they're most of them are a, a shade of blue, and that they're just a, a great plant. Again, that's grape hyacinths. Get out there. Go to your local garden center, and I want you to get some bulbs and plant Planters. them now. Yeah. Now, yeah. not, not in this, not the in the spring. You, you don't plant them when you see the you see them out. You plant them before, and you'll enjoy them in the spring. We'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial six zero nine six eight five. 1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609 685 one eight eight zero, and we'll see you in the garden. Here we go. All right. Hey, hey. Halloween's coming up. It is. Isn't it? I, I want everybody to have a happy and, and safe Halloween. Hope everybody has fun. But we'll be back here in the garden with you next week in November. Oh. Oh. We'll see you in the garden. See you in the garden.